Now, they threatened to shut down the economy over lack of consensus regarding the new minimum wage negotiations and the reversal of electricity tariff, and they are at it. Now, despite pleas from the federal government to, for reconsideration, members of the Nigerian Labor Congress and the Trade Union Congress of Nigeria finally embarked on an industrial action. In solidarity, workers from various sectors withdrew their services, disrupted operations at the airport, blocked entry to the seaport in Lagos, and shut down the national grid, leading to nationwide blackout. But Nigerians are outraged, lamenting that the ongoing strike spells more woes for the struggling economy. As such, stakeholders are appealing to the labor unions to be considerate in their demand for 494,000 naira as minimum wage and accept the 60,000 naira proposed by the federal government and organized private sector. Well, let's share some updates with you. Despite the intervention of the National Assembly leadership, the organized labor begins a nationwide strike. The industrial actions start in Abuja. Petrol stations are still selling fuel. Other parts are ghost town. Lawyers are stranded as judiciary workers shut down the Court of Appeal in Abuja. We, at this chapter, we are not taking anything less. Staff at the National Assembly were also left stranded as they were denied access to the complex. Well, if you look at the country generally, everything is on the high side. The, most especially the common man. We are not saying uh, federal government must pay, but they should do something reasonably that we can consider. In Lagos, all operations at the local airport have been cancelled. These are images from the Muritala Mohammed International Airport. So I have been here since 5.30 a.m. Um, I was supposed to board United Nigeria. Unfortunately, the airports have been grounded by NLC. Obviously, the um, strike has commenced here at the airports. In Delta, there is strict compliance to the strike in Asaba, the state capital, as the Unity Secondary School is under lock and key. Students who are supposed to begin their external examination are now returning to their homes as no teacher is in the premises. Report also suggests that labor union has shut down the national greed, resulting in nationwide blackout. The Transmission Company of Nigeria in a statement said the national greed was shut down at about 2.19 a.m. We had light issue in this house for a little while. And just after that was rectified, they brought the light yesterday. I was still thinking that all these things would be preserved. And then, after bringing the light just yesterday, yesterday was 2nd of June. Biko, you know, this story about the labor union going on strike, no one saw this coming, the point at which we are right now, up to the point that um, the national grid was shut down by the labor unions. And of course, we've just seen this report by our correspondent that external examinations has been halted. But what do you make of the development so far? Governed by law. Uh, I don't think it makes sense to contravene our laws just because you are asking for more people. I would want labor to get more pay at this time. In line with the inflationary trend, it makes sense sense to increase worker salaries. Both of my parents serve this nation as public servants and they were in my view not 
if salaries are reflected, the sacrifices that they made at that time. So I won't sit here as the son of a teacher who worked. All right. Because I'm, I've been asked to hold your thoughts for now because I think there's a little bit of um, challenge over your technicalities of the audio. But let me quickly come to you, Mojid. Let me quickly come to you on this matter because we understand that this matter really, you know, needs a decisive action because this is not the first time Labor Union has been asking, going in negotiations with the federal government, asking for a national minimum wage. Do you think perhaps the government didn't handle this properly? What are your thoughts? Um, you know, the presidency, because of the importance they attached to this, set up a 37-member committee of the FG, headed by the vice president. Um, and that is on one part. Then we have two others, the organized private sector and the labor union. So it's like a tripartite committee. And they have been going back and forth. Organized private sector, they are the employers here, apart from federal government. The NLC and TUC and the others are workers, the employees. So the employers, those who know, I mean that they, who have the capacity to determine that this is how much I can pay, the two of them, out of the three in the tripartite, agreed that yes, 60,000. But me, I feel that 60,000 might still be low. Federal government can still go higher, but not anywhere near 494 or 97,000. Mm -hmm. No, no. You can't shut down critical state infrastructure like um, the national grid, the airports, hospitals, and say you are going on strike. Let's not forget that this has been an ongoing negotiation. Yes, that's, that's, why, I, that's why I gave that background that, I mean, they have been going back and forth. Yes, Labour gave May 31 uh, deadline. deadline. But cutting off the head is not the solution to the headache you are having no matter how big your head is. This one, what you have done now, shutting down the national grid, the, we are on zero transmission now since 2 a.m. all over the country. No light. I mean, it's like holding a, a nation to ransom. Those, now if you have a medical emergency, you need to fly abroad or you need, uh, you need to take a consignment that you need to, they need to use. The yeah, international airport has been shut down Local airport shut down. So there are some the hospitals too. Those who need medicals, they can't access medicals. So I believe they should put some humanity into uh, some of these things. Now, the irony of it is that those, the government you think you are punishing by shutting down the national grid, some of them can afford to buy generators, I mean, to, uh, they, have, they afford to buy generators and the fuel, if that diesel or petrol, to fuel their generators at, at state cost in their cozy offices and homes and, uh, uh, and uh, uh, quarters. It is we who will have to suffer, I mean, uh, the, the, the consequences. So I think labor should depoliticize this thing, of course, while also urging the federal government to probably move up a, 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 move up a bit and uh, uh, if they say 60,000 is small, but then, the, in reality, apart from journalism, I have a side also, I run a supermarket. Right. I'll, who can tell me to come and pay uh, uh, 450,000 to the least paid worker in my, in my uh, employee? Right, let me hold it's your not thoughts. possible. Yeah, let me hold your thoughts on this for now. We need to go on a very quick break. We have more discussions on this very issue when we return. Please stay with us. Welcome back. You're still on to Journalist Hangout, and we're looking at the industrial action by Labour Congress over the new national minimum wage. BKO, let's have your perspective on this issue, even as there are mixed reactions over Labour's decision to shut down the national grid and, of course, other uh, areas that were closed down due to its demands. I mean, is, um, is rascality taken too far? 
by going to shut down the national grid. Mm. We can't turn our country to a nation that is not governed by laws. We cannot say we want to be like the great countries of the world and we are refusing to do what they do. In South Africa, people on essential services are precluded from any form of strike. But what they put in place is a system that allows for speedy arbitration when there are disputes with such categories of workers. It is an internationally recognized convention that strikes are not going to involve people in essential services. When we talk about people in essential services, they include CBN, for example, people providing electricity, even a security uh, printing um, uh, company, security printing and maintenance company that um, prints our oh, Naira notes. It is inconceivable, for example, for the police to go on strike. It's not permitted. Or for the army to go on strike. Because we know the implication of such people going on strike. That would be a total be break anarchy. Yeah. The last, the, during, the, during the uh, IBB era, when some people switched down off the grid, they were jailed. Is it that our governments are no longer capable of enforcing our laws? I was speaking with an individual, you know, in Nigerians, when, they, when you're arguing with them, suddenly they will start giving examples of uh, countries of the world and talking about things that they know little about. And somebody said, ah, the way we treat workers here, nobody uh, uh, treats workers like that in, uh, in other countries, in the Arab countries. Can any worker, any worker, whether you are a member of a union in uh, al Sisi's Egypt, go and switch off the grid. al Sisi, the president of Egypt, one of the um, uh, most powerful presidents in Africa currently, that transmuted from a civilian, I mean, a military ruler to civilian. Can you go and switch off the grid in this country? We know that the law is against it. Let me read section 30, uh, 31, subsection 6 of the Trade Union Act as amended. No person, trade union or employer, shall take part in a strike or lock out or engage in any conduct in contemplation of any furtherance of trade disputes unless the person is not engaged in the provision of essential services. The law is clear. It's double sided irresponsibility double-sided rascality to go and switch off the grid. Because some people did it the other day, they got away with it. Now they've gone to do it again. You want to shut down the seaport, stop people from flying? All of these have serious ramifications. We cannot pretend not to know that there are limits to these things. So what then is the right avenue for them to channel their grievances if all these are not... Well, what the law says, they shouldn't go through this route. They know that they are being rascally. You cannot go and stop people involved in the essential services from working. You can't. You can't. Have we not had strikes in this country? Did Oshomole not uh, uh, take NLC to a strike? Not even once. During Obasanjo's era. Did they shut down the grid? Are you going to say Oshomole is not stubborn enough? Did they shut down the grid? Or oh, even Ayuba Waba. Under Ayuba Waba. We've had strikes. Haba. There are limits to these things. Ask Haba Fiau. Because we want more. We, okay. continue to Every, We are not saying that they should not increase uh, workers' salary. I'm, I, my feeling is that if political appointees earn as much as they earn, workers do need to earn a living wage. I've always asked for it. That is record. So you're not opposed. For it. So you're not opposed to the strike. It's why just the method. It's just the, the method. Why should like I be which? opposed to the strike? Right. I've said my own parents who served this nation. 
you are public servants. It will be irresponsible for me to sit here and say, no, don't, don't give workers their due. Don't give workers a better welfare. No. I've always demanded for it. But there are limits. If the law says this category of workers cannot go on strike, so be it. A day will come when policemen will say they are going on strike because we allow electricity workers to go and shut down the grid, and it's against the law. Maybe I just read it now. Oh, so have we now become a country where the law no longer takes preeminence, where people can do what they like? Because you want to collect 494,000? Who will pay 494,000? Who? If uh, Ajoiro becomes president of Nigeria, can he pay 494,000? Can he pay for 94,000? Can he even pay 200,000? Because you can't pay this kind of money under the present situation that we find ourselves as a country. What are, how much are we earning? We deceive ourselves that we are such a rich nation. What is the size of your budget? Some African countries have budgets bigger than Nigeria's budget. What are we talking about? Who can pay 200,000? We keep saying, oh, federal government, let federal government agree. Let federal government. If federal government agrees and the states don't, don't pay for and it's supposed to be law, what I want to see is a, is a situation in which we pay what is affordable and we pay what is sustainable. That's what I want to see. Some of these governors have not even paid 30000 I was talking the other day about the governor of uh, Abia. Abia. When workers. Labor uh, Party. At uh, this same NLCO. They were Labor Party. Him. They were begging, don't leave, leave his party alone. But it's Labor Party. Labor no, we have to oh say it. God. <laughs> Go ahead. You talk as if Labor Party is different from other parties. No. Okay. How are they different? Are they, are they not elements that let PDP, just to use it as a, 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 a kind of a vehicle? It's a small, small I mean, they, are they not products of the same political system? Leave Labor Party. We are saying that, I am saying that Labor Party, I mean, Labor a union. They went and they were begging OT to pay 30 million, 30 naira minimum wage. 30,000. 30,000 minimum wage. I mean, it's on record that they were begging him, please, pay 30,000 minimum wage. Somebody has not paid 30,000 minimum wage. You know you are not blind to that reality. You are talking about 494. This is a tripartite thing. It's not the federal government alone. Even if the federal government has the capacity, do the states have the capacity? What are the implications? of moving the minimum wage in our country to something in the realm of 150. What are the implications? Can we pay? Or we just announce so we can pay? Then after a while, people stop paying. When they stop paying, they contravene the law. The law says that should be the minimum. Because when they finish all of this uh, debate, they will take the bill to the National Assembly and it's supposed to become law. When it becomes law, Everybody should be able, everybody should pay, everybody should comply. But if we create a situation in which people can't pay, states can't pay, then how will the law not be contravened? That is the, that is the point that we are making. Some states are yet to pay 30,000. Some states are still paying uh, 18,000 minimum wage in this mm. country. Way back. In this country. And I've given an example. If anybody thinks I'm lying, let them Google it. Uh, NLC went to beg uh, Governor Oti, please pay 30,000 minimum wage. It's even very recent that it happened. So if somebody cannot pay 30,000, they are begging him to pay 30,000 minimum wage. You are now talking about 494,000. That's, that's, that amounts to whining us. 40, 494. <laughs> do, 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 I, I mean, is, this is, are we joking or what? So what would you prefer as reasonable? Living wage. Reasonable, reasonable. You see, reasonable must also be affordable and must also be sustainable. I will not support something that is not sustainable. We abuse governors who are not paying, but you must not put them in a situation in which they can't pay. Reasonable to me is something a little higher than 100,000. And even that will come at a great cost. Now, any time we are thinking of rationalizing the workforce, labor will be up in arms. Any time you want to privatize some uh, sector, 
of the economy that are still family in government hands, labor will be up in arms. If the government says, okay, we will be able to pay 150, but a sizable portion of, of the force. workforce will go. Will Ajero and Co. not take up arms again? Will Osifo and Co. not be running from pillar to post again? Because I don't see how you can pay this kind of money without some consequences. You can't even pay half. I don't see you paying half of this without serious consequences. People, some people will have to go. All of those ministries where we are accommodating dead woods, 10, 10 drivers to three vehicles, some of them will have to go. Will labor agree to that? Labor must be ready. How do you, everybody knows that. Minimum wage talks take time. And this NSC under Ajero, we, we already set a deadline that if they don't, the, the talks do not, they don't complete the talks, that you go on strike. Why are you so crazy about strikes? Why, are you, why do you want to go on strike? At a, even the last minimum wage that President uh, um, uh, oh, uh, it took a very long time. Now you are trying to stampede everybody to agree to a minimum. This is this thing takes time. Check the time that it took Buhari before Buhari resolved the issue of minimum wage at thirty thousand. That Governor Oti and others still can't pay. Huh? Check the time that it took them to arrive at that. It doesn't. It does, it's not easy. The negotiation will be tortuous. It will take time. But to say, oh, if we do not, uh, if we do not agree on minimum wage by so by May thirty first, then you are going on strike. How do you run a labor union like that? That at every opportunity you want to use your your strongest weapon. What kind of strategy is that? We have we have to tell ourselves the truth. Yes, things are bad in our in our country. People are starving, but there are many things that labor can push the government to do beyond even increasing salaries, which will make the, the, uh, the generality of our people right. to feel that, yes, life is getting better for them. Life getting better for workers is not simply through salary increase alone. Inflation can wipe out the salary increase that has happened within a twink of an eye. So they should be focused. They should be inventive in the way they think and right. say, okay, what can government do? Let's demand that government does this. So that things will be easy for our people. It's not, not be by salary increase alone. Not be by salary increase alone. Salary increase to benefit how many people? What is the percentage of workers? Out of, uh, about, uh, out of uh, uh, 200 million Nigerians, workers are probably about 5 million maximum. All right.